Because there aren't enough streaming services in the world, this week we got a new one. It's called Binge. But Binge is not quite what it seems. It's actually the new streaming service from Foxtel, who you can actually subscribe to and, and watch on the internet. So is it any good? Should you sign up for it? Is it worth cancelling a Foxtel subscription and getting Binge? Let's discuss. We have Seamus Byrne, the host of the Bite Side podcast, and we have Ariel Bogle, technology reporter with the ABC. Seamus, what is the genesis of Binge? Why, why does it have this new name? So I'd like to go back to the origin being probably Presto, which was oh, a previous Foxtel initiative to launch a standalone video service for the ballpark of $10 a month. And then a year or so later, they closed that one down. And now we have a, a completely brand new service that is essentially full of TV shows and movies that you would otherwise find really on Foxtel, if you're paying for full-priced Foxtel, uh, now packaged up as this new service available across pretty much everything you can install an app on um, called Binge. I am happy to admit that I'm a, uh, a Foxtel subscriber. I was one of those people that signed up for pretty much Game of Thrones and that was it and the various different HBO shows. And I've always braced at how bad it is to use as a streaming service because if I want to watch it on TV, if I want to watch any of that content on TV, I've got to open up my computer, airplay it up to the television. And there's always like variations of that because it doesn't seem to have an app that works on Apple TV or Fetch or any of those sorts of things. And I don't have the box, right? Is Binge a good replacement for the thing that I'm currently doing now? Can somebody answer that question for me? It still baffles me that Foxtel refuses to make an Apple TV app. Whenever I ask them, they always say, but you can airplay whatever you are watching on your iPad or your you know, whatever other device. You can airplay that to your main TV. And it's like, but the idea that they are still deciding that you have to have the set-top box if you want to pay for full version Foxtel is kind of ludicrous at this point in history. Like it's hard at this point to really work out what gaps exist that you can only still watch on Foxtel versus, I guess it's probably the live TV channels as a concept. You know, that's kind of the, the heart of it really. But it's just bizarre that they keep refusing to create the actual core Foxtel product as an app for TVs. Why isn't there a Foxtel watchable app on, on other platforms? I guess it would be potentially be a, an attempt to sort of keep stuff in-house um, to eliminate as much reliance as possible on outside platforms and keep that IP and keep that connection with the audience far more direct, you know, keeping out the mediator, the third party that Apple would be. But really at this point, it's certainly a mystery. I think it depends too on the watcher. I have to admit, I'm really kind of a laptop streaming watcher. So all this business of apps and um you know, Airstream and things doesn't really matter to me, but I understand the frustration for people that just want it to connect with everything else they've got so they can quickly toggle between platforms. I have like a five-year-old 4K TV that's like an old Sony TV, but it had the Foxtel Play or Now or whatever the name of that particular app was. That was built into that smart TV and that does still work. They keep supporting that old app, even though it's kind of a weird orphaned app that's available directly on that TV. So there are sort of certain areas where they do support it. They've just always kind of chosen to not put it on Apple TV. Just as a service in isolation, how's the user interface, Seamus? When it works nicely, it's fine. It is perfectly serviceable. They have moments where like the buttons weren't working in, in Apple TV. I got like stuck in their binge list uh, page, which is where basically where your saved stuff is. And like, this is another part of it. They've run so hard with this whole kind of binge theming. When you press play on a show or a movie, it doesn't say play, it says binge. <laughs> oh God. You want to binge it, you better hit the button. And it's just like, don't get so carried away with your own sort of cleverness that you actually interrupt the ability to watch it. And then the second part of that is actually I find it's kind of the total sort of nerd aspect that that they need to kind of work on to make sure it stacks up against the competition and that's things like the compression of TV shows. If they are compressing that too hard, which means they're using less data to push through that much, then you start to kind of see all those, you know, jaggy bits on the screen yeah. or particularly in like smooth areas, you'll sort of notice 
colours don't blend together properly. They're the kinds of things that I've kind of been able to notice on it. And then when I watch exactly the same show over on Stan, I'm not seeing those same artefact problems. Maybe it's one of those kind of cost-saving measures, but you're like, that is something that is a bad business decision if users are going to notice that your shows look worse than the competition. Um, Ariel, there's a different price tiers here that they've got, $10, $14, and $18. What, why are there different price tiers? What do you get with those? Well, like other platforms at this point, there's a breakdown between allowing people to watch on multiple screens at once. So if you wanted yourself, your partner, or kids to all be able to watch it at the same time, you might shell out for the higher price and also the difference between SD and HD. I wanted to point out too about the interface. Gizmodo reported that in fact it's launched without closed captions. Uh, obviously that is a big deal for people that might be uh, have hearing issues, uh, the deaf community. To launch without, you know, being able to serve a demographic is a bit of a shame. Apparently Foxtel is going to fix that and I think they should do that as soon as possible too. For inclusivity, of course, it must be a priority, but also for myself, I really enjoy at this point watching everything with closed captions for some reason. So <laughs> that would be a point in Binder's favour for myself as well. <laughs> there is lots more of this in the podcast edition of Download This Show. You can find it wherever you podcast. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 